So Marvel Comics is back to their old tricks again, trying to chase headlines instead of sales. And, well, they do manage to get the headlines. I don't know how many comic book sales they pick up from this because they've been using these tactics for a few years now and it really hasn't translated to success. Imagine having to sink to lows like this when you have the most popular movie genre in the world and you never capitalized on it, (laughs) you know? You never capitalized on that. And now that comic book genre for movies is kind of fizzling out. Imagine what's going to happen to Marvel and DC Comics when there's no more comic book movies. Do you think that they're going to continue to subsidize these formats without movies to back them up? Like that's the only reason I think that they keep these comics going is because of the movies. We'll see if I'm wrong or not, but... It's only a matter of time. The way things are going with comic books, eventually people are just going to get tired of this stuff. I, I I think we're already seeing it with with the Marvel television shows. Nobody's really buzzing about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't hear anybody talking. Not like WandaVision. Every Friday, people were talking about WandaVision for at least from Friday to Sunday or Monday. They are talking about what happened. Oh, what's the new twist? Nobody's really going on about... Falcon and the Winter Soldier, except for when Zemo danced. That kind of got a little bit moving with uh, social media trends, but that was it. But anyway, in case you don't know what's going on here, apparently Red Skull in the comics is now Jordan Peterson. He's also a couple of other things. It kind of seems like he's a YouTuber. Now, if you've been following my channel and other channels, I imagine you have been. Uh, comics have been getting a lot of heat from YouTubers because, well, the comic book media doesn't do it. They rate all this trash like five stars. So naturally, Marvel doesn't like them. Doesn't like them at all. So they've turned Red Skull into a Peterson YouTuber, basically. And what happens when they do that? You can see here, Chaos in Order. Oh, the feminist trap. Right. So this is terrible. I I don't read this number one, because Captain America is written by Ta-Nehisi Coates right now. The guy who said absolutely disgusting things about first responders. I, I I think the man is, is a terrible person, garbage person, to be honest. So uh, I refuse to even review these comics or read them or pay anything. I don't even want to download them for free. I, I want nothing to do with him. Anything that has his name attached to it, I will usually just boycott it because uh, he's a nasty person. But of course, you know, the, they managed to get what they wanted here. You've got Mary Sue talking about it. And then if you just search Red Skull, I mean, boom, every outlet. Yeah, this is so great. Oh, awesome. So cool. Oh, they're really sticking it to the Peterson and his and his buddies. But does this translate to sales? No, never does. That phantom audience that they're always constantly trying to to woo and win over never happens. They never come. However, everything outside of Marvel and DC seems to be doing well when they cater to the actual audience. I did a video on this a while ago. Look at Power Rangers here. A great comic book. A great comic book, actually, that tries to please the fans of Power Rangers and new fans alike. Like, literally, if you're a fan of of manga and comic books, like, I think that there's something here for you to, to like. Strong characters, not really any nonsense. Uh, this this is a great comic book series. Probably one of the best that I've, I've read in years. I really, I really like these books. And what's happened is Boom has repackaged them and pretty much are selling the books they've already put out in these premium bookcases. And they're really nice. Uh, It's made, as you can see here, a million dollars. This is after the Kickstarter had finished. It's after hours Kickstarter or whatever that even means. 
Uh, so you can still back it. It's got almost 2,000 people now. And all of them have spent over $500. Like the average is like 500 bucks because that's how you get the entire set. See, like for 125 100 you can get one of these volumes. But what's the point of that? I suppose if you really just want one of the arcs, that's fine. But most people are buying all of them. And that's why this arc right here has been the top seller. You've got a lot of people buying the, well, no, they're not so much. Here you got this one. You get the Kickstarter edition set, 20 claimed, stuff like that. Um, and then you've also got seven people buying this $1,400 one. One person buys this $3,000 one. I mean, you get the idea. The, the point is a lot of people have backed this. And a lot of them have spent money, big money. And it's on good, strong characters. There's no really any woke nonsense in this. It's just telling you a story and kind of giving the fans what they want in a way, which is how you make money. And then you go over to something like Berserk, which has made over a million dollars. You got this strong, masculine character here. You know, the people, it, it's just what's crazy to me is people still want comics. They still want Western comics. And a lot of people have to go to manga because there's nothing else. And this is why you see stuff like My Hero Academia just literally clobbering everything, right? But you can still squeak out some some American comics here if you just give people traditionally what they want. You know, the strong character. You've got a superhero team essentially right here doing transformations and, and martial arts and giant robots and people love it and they're willing to spend big money on it. Okay. But if you go to your traditional outlets like Marvel, you get today's politics headlines at Newsweek and, and Huffington post and Buzzfeed, but no real comic books. It's really sad, but this is amazing. Uh, this was pointed out to me a couple of days ago that this was over a million dollars now. And it's like, what are you doing, Marvel? How do you sit there as a manage, like in, in management over there and see what these comics are doing and say, well, why aren't we making that money? You know, and we we're doing the same things over and over again. This is like the hundredth time that they've shot for headlines at media sites and it's never translated to money. It's never translated to sales, but they keep chasing it. It makes no sense. Like at some point you would like clean house at the management at Marvel. Like you just fire everybody and replace them. I, I, that's what a good business does. You know, and people are advocating for firing people. Look in the real world at jobs, if you underperform and you never gain sales for years, you're just at a, a downward slope. Usually, businesses will change management, make changes, but no, they keep bringing in the same people. They keep giving the same people promotions. There's a lot to say there, but you know the people at Boom, they seem to get it. They really do. That's who did Berserk and this. And you see them really just kind of cleaning up house. It's, it's amazing to see. So anyway... Let me know what you guys think. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Also, if you want to help support the channel, check out my Teespring store. There's a link in the description. You can find some merchandise in there that you might want to check out.